What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? Welcome to J Rich Fits Lifestyle and Health Coaching Corner. We are on episode 19. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today's topic is speaking up versus being a bystander. So before we get into it, I feel like this is a really big topic, especially with how society is nowadays, where there's a lot more bystanderness, even though that's not a real word, but there's more of that going on where a lot of people are very afraid to speak up, be the one to step forward and say that's wrong or help somebody out. I think there's a lot more people pulling phones out and filming and forgetting that they're actually there and it's not a movie and you can make a difference if you speak up. So with that being said, we're going to jump right into it. Why and when is a good time to speak up? First of all, why speak up? Like I just said right there, if there's an injustice going on or if there's something that uh, is happening that you don't want to happen, if you decide to speak up, there might be a lot of other people with the same opinion as you but they're too intimidated or too afraid to do it by themselves. And all they need is that little push. And you would be that little push to help kind of sway the masses and to uh, right the wrong. So why speak up is for that reason alone. I think that there's a lot more people out there that need help. that They can't physically do it, can't outwardly vocally do it. If you have these natural skills, I think it's almost uh, bestowed upon you to do that. I think you need to realize, hey, if you physically could right a wrong or if you could verbally right a wrong and somebody doesn't have those, then you got to be able to provide that for them. You have to help them out. I think that's a huge why on speaking up. I think there's a lot of people that are taking advantage nowadays. And it's up to you to use the skills that you have to right a lot of wrongs. When is a good time? First one is when somebody's in need. They could be in need, like I just said. They could be a lesser when they're not as strong or they're not as confident. And they might need you. And they're in a situation and you provide. And with that being said... We'll jump into a little story. So there was one time I was in my young 20s and uh, I was on a bus and I had all my clothes and everything like that. I was going to go take a, a flight and I was moving back and I was on a bus and it was packed and it was super late. It was like midnight, <clears throat> but there's a lot of people on the bus. A lot of uh, drug addicts were in the back. So a lot of normal people were all in the front. And all the drug acts were in the back, and they're being loud, and they're just talking a whole bunch of shit. And for me, I was tired. I said, hey, they're not saying nothing to me. I'm chilling. And they weren't bothering anybody. So I was just like, ah, oh, let them be stupid. Like, what kind of uh, fight would that be? Like, why would I want to fight a bunch of crackheads for no reason just because they're being loud? So I'm just sitting there, and I'm like nodding off, getting ready to go to sleep. And mind you, it's a mixed bag. There's a lot of men and women on the bus, young guys, old guys. Young women, young, uh, older women, kids, everything like that. In the front. In the back, it's all dope fiends and drug acts and shit. And uh, we make a stop. And this young girl gets on. She's probably my age, young 20s. Uh, regular person, wasn't a drug act, nothing like that. But very unaware of her surroundings. She gets on the bus. Plenty of seats in the front. Plenty of seats in the middle. And where does she decide to go? All the way towards the back of the bus where all the crackheads and the meth heads were. I'm seeing this while I'm halfway nodding off and I'm like, please don't go in the fucking back. That's not going to be good. Past me, there's about six other men, normal guys, that could help her out, say something, do anything like that. And I'm nodding off and right when she sits down, it's just a circus and in the back most of the meth and crackheads were all men they're giving her the hardest time like hitting on her 
saying vulgar things, doing like or making gestures, all that stuff. <clears throat> and it was starting to really piss me off. But the main thing that was really pissing me off is I was looking at all the other guys and that could say something or do something that were way closer to me. And they were all straight looking at the bus like this, chest out, not saying nothing, not doing anything. Big guys. They weren't small guys that couldn't handle themselves. It's a lot of men that didn't want to say or do anything. And the whole time I'm just sitting there and I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't know this girl at all. I'm 20 minutes from getting on the airplane and going back home. And, well, I guess we got to figure it out today. So I just knew the worst was going to happen. The way that these guys were acting and how many that they had, it wasn't just going to be a verbal attack. They were to get off on the stop that she got off on and something bad was probably going to end up happening. And for me, I just couldn't stand around and uh, have that happen because my conscience wouldn't be clear. I wouldn't be able to to sleep that night or I wouldn't be able to uh, really just feel like a man, just feel like who I am and what I represent. So I had this humongous jacket on. And the and the one thing that I was fucking worried about the whole time, because fighting them, I was like, oh, I can fight them. They're crackheads. Like, I hit them. They'll just turn to dust. I didn't want to get stuck with a needle. I knew a lot of them probably had needles on them, and who knows what kind of blood they're carrying or anything like that. I was just like, oh, well, here goes a light changer. So I just got super tired. I jumped up, threw all my bags down. Zip my jacket all the way up just in case they stab me with something it might not get through And I just told them I said hey listen fellas You're gonna shut the fuck up right now And on the next stop you're all gonna get the fuck off this bus Mind you I'm not that intimidating now Old man now Young 20s I was about 215 College football My neck out to here They didn't know what the fuck I could do or not do They just saw the physicality that I had on me they all jumped up, and the leader one was the toughest one, and he thought I was going to be a pussy like everybody else. So he stepped up. But the cool part is, I strategically broke this shit down. It was like 300. And 300, the reason why they keep winning until the very end is there's this now narrow, this narrow alleyway where you can flush them all in, but they get smaller and smaller the closer they get in. If you know how a bus is built, there's a narrow alleyway. It's just me. I'm going down crack row, fucking eating everybody up if everybody wants some. Eight of them at the funnel do this little way. I'm going to snake all of them. They're all getting fucked up. And if not, I'm throwing motherfuckers through a fucking exit window. <clears throat> so uh, the leader steps up and he starts trying to talk shit. And I told him, I said, hey, and then I ran right up, got real close to him. I said, hey, listen, I don't know how serious you think I am or am not, but don't get off off on this stop and see what the fuck happens. I say you're out here talking a bunch of shit. You're giving this girl a hard fucking time. I said don't get off don't get off on this stop, and let's figure it out. Stop comes, everybody flushed off. <laughs> of course they're flushing off talking shit and everything like that. But they all flush off, and uh, that ends up being the end of that story. I mean, there's other parts to it that I'm gonna get to later, but that's the end of that story. And that part is. It just took one person to say something to help somebody out. If you could take anything from that story, don't be Mr. Tough Guy. Don't try to fight everybody because at the end of the day, it did help her. And it was something that I was very confident in doing. But it could get you in a bad situation that you don't need. Like I said, I'm Tough Guy. Whatever. I talk all this shit and was doing all that stuff. Took one of them with a dirty needle to stick me. And what changed my whole life. So really think about what you're getting into when you decide to do things. And uh, sometimes you can just intimidate. Use your words. Do that type of stuff. And physical altercations have to come with it. So be it. But don't jump right into that. Try to uh, intimidate and do as much as you can to help somebody out. Before you have to go beat somebody up. And that's that story. (laughs) When someone is being threatened unfairly, or oh no, so the second one is when somebody's being treated unfairly. So that's another reason why you should speak up is 
somebody could be wrongly accused of something. Somebody could be uh, picked on about something that they didn't do. That's another good time to speak up. A lot of people don't do that. Like I said, a lot of people pull phones out or a lot of people write blogs or say something on the back end, but it's like on the front end of things. I think when you know somebody didn't do something and you have the evidence to prove that they didn't, please speak up. Please help them out because there's a lot of injustice that happens in the court system. There's a lot of injustice that happens in the day-to-day movement. And all it takes is for somebody to speak up to get a lot of those things eradicated. So if you know or if you have information, don't, I hate the whole fucking snitches get stitches and this, this, this. There are certain situations where you are snitching and the, the way I can explain it to you is if you feel like you're going above and beyond out of your way to interject, it has the furthest to do with you and you're just doing it to do it and your facts aren't strong and they're kind of made up or not made up, yeah, don't say nothing. But if there's a true injustice that is going on, somebody's wrongly being accused of rape or somebody was murdered or somebody might lose their job for no, like, these go a little bit, those are dramatic ones, but like somebody might lose their job for something they didn't do and you have the evidence and facts to help them out, Please do so. It's not snitching. All you're doing is looking out for somebody. And uh, those things will always come back to you. Uh, Perfect example. Another story. Just recently, I was in a parking lot with my girlfriend. And a car passes us to go into a parking space. Wide open parking space. Goes in. I don't know if this fucking lady was on Prozac or something, but smashes and swipes the whole side of the other parked car, turns her car all the way in like nothing ever happened, parked it, got out, looked over, saw it, and walked away. I said, is this lady on fucking coke or something? How the fuck do you do that? How you smash and drag the shit out of a car, look at it, pretend like nothing happened, then walk away? I could have easily been a pussy bystander, but... I do for others that I'd want to do, but somebody I would want them to do for me. I fucking couldn't believe it. That lady walked off too fast for me to even comprehend what the hell she just did and say something to her. I grabbed a piece of paper, wrote down on the for the car next, hey, this stupid ass bitch just hit your fucking car. Here's her license plate. Here's my number. If you need a witness, hit me up. Put it right in their stuff, walked away. Most people nowadays would see that and be like, oh, shit, did you just see that? Man, that hella sucks. Yeah, you fuck. Go help him out. <laughs> Don't just sit there and uh, look at something like you're not a part of it and just comment and not help somebody out. You could say all that shit, but the next move is help that person out because if somebody sideswiped your fucking car... You'd want somebody to help out. So do the same shit. I think that's what I'm getting at. Is if you see a situation, do something for somebody that you'd want them to do for you. Or you'd want them to do for your mom. Always think in those terms. And stop thinking in this bystander fucking pussy term. Why are most people bystanders? I feel like I've commented on it a lot, but a lot of people are bystanders, first of all, because they're scared. It takes a lot to call somebody out. It takes a lot to step forward while everybody else steps back. And uh, the fear of the unknown is what scares everybody. The main reason a lot of people don't fight is because a lot of people are scared to get knocked out. Or a lot of people don't know if they'll actually win. So it's like that 50-50 chance scares the shit out of people. A lot of them would rather just watch. That's why millions upon millions watch fighting. But the actual organizations, a couple thousand, that's about it. Because it takes a lot to really get the confidence to get up, go fight somebody. And I think in day-to-day life, 
a lot of guys lift weights and a lot of guys look big, but on the inside, they're about that big <laughs> because they don't know how to throw a punch or they've never been punched. So they just don't know what's going to end up happening. And that's why you see a lot of big dudes when weird situations happen. You look at them like, hey, dude, you do something. They're like, fuck, are you going to do something? And you're like, God damn, what you lift all them weights for, big guy? Go get your ass out there and help somebody. But fear is a big one. Lazy. Lazy's huge. It's so, like I said, it's so easy nowadays to just pull your phone out and record. It's so hard nowadays to fucking keep your phone where it is and step up to the call and go do something. And I'm saying men because I am a man. And I know that's very show. Hey, ladies, y'all could do the same. There's a lot more ladies out there with bigger ball sacks than some of these guys that will uh, step up to the challenge. I hear women speak up more and I hear women puff their chest out nowadays more than men do. And I applaud you guys and thank you for that. You guys are leading the way. You're showing these young boys how to be men. Because a lot of the new generation, they forgot what it is to be a man. I think their dad was getting, their generations skipped. Their dad was getting slapped up as a kid, so they forgot to slap their own sons. And they forgot to teach them how to be real men. So now, I thank you ladies for going out there and uh, showing them firsthand how it is to be a strong individual and to speak up and to right wrongs. So I think laziness is a huge one. Uh, and then they don't want to get involved. Scared, lazy. You can combine them together. And it's the, uh, it's the default of not wanting to get involved. Not wanting to uh, get hurt. Not wanting to slow your day down. Not wanting to uh, give a statement. Because it takes time. And I think that a lot of people... Look at it like, oh, that sucks. Walk away. That's why more people stop during accidents and keep driving. Rarely do you see an accident happen and a car pull off to the side. Which gets me into one more story. I remember uh, years ago, I was driving on the freeway. I was going like 70. And a car flies by me in the slow lane. If I'm going 70... They whiz by me, easily going 100. They got off. So when they go 100, they're in a lane that goes into residential. But what they didn't realize was it's a sharp turn. They thought it went straight and down. It was a sharp turn. Right before the exit finishes, where I have an option, they go and flip over the sharp turn and roll. And I see five cars see the same thing I saw, and they all just kept going. Same thing. I was like, well, I can't sleep at night if I don't see if they survive. Go off to the side, stop the car. Their car is rolled and split in half, and you hear people screaming. Run over, me and another older man. There were a bunch of people that saw this. It was me and a 65-year-old man that ran over. Knowing that, hey, we might pull somebody that's cut in half out or we're going to see some shit that we might really not want to see. Luckily enough, after all the screaming and the car and the twisted metal and everything like that, we pulled both kids out the car. Had to be 20. Drugged up, drunk, everything like that. Pull them both out the car, sit them down. They kind of, the girl's freaking out. The boy is freaking out because obviously he's drunk. And uh, he knows he'll get DUI and everything like that. I jogged my car to go grab a water for them. And when I come back, instead of thanking this 65-year-old man and uh, just showing so much gratitude, the young kid is threatening to fight him if he doesn't give them a ride away from the scene. So once again... He had the bystander mentality of like, let's get the fuck out of here. I don't even, he didn't even want to be there. And he was the one that caused it. Instead of being a man and being like, hey, this is my fault. I ruined my girlfriend's car that I was driving. And I was going way too fast. And now I have to step up to the consequences. He wanted a quick out. So he's threatening this guy. Long story short, I intervene, sit him down, explain to him. Nope, you got to sit in this. The cops are coming. 
Sorry, bro. Ain't nobody gonna help you escape this one. And if you're trying to escape through this man, you gotta go through me first. Same thing. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. Sometimes you just gotta use intimidation. You gotta use the that move to get people to do the right thing. He had to sit there. The cops had to come. We did a little statement. We did. It took me an hour when it was all said and done. Do I regret that hour? Not at all. I was so glad that they were both okay. And I was so glad to be the person that actually helped pull them out. Because when I looked behind me, there were about 15 other people standing away from the car saying this thing. People watch too many movies. It's going to blow. What the fuck? Do you think there's a bomb in the fucking car? Nah, motherfucker. It's, the car's just fucked up. It's not going to blow up like how the movies say it's going to blow up. Pull these people out of the car. Help them out. And then leave, or then fucking step away from the car and think it's going to blow up. But the car's not going to blow up, you fucking idiots. It's just going to be all jacked up. If they make cars a blow up like that, do you not think you see a, you would have seen a car blow up by now? Holy shit. So it's like people use these uh, fantasies to trick their brain into, instead of helping, just watching. So it's like you would have been cool watching a car blow up with two teenagers or two young 20-year-old people in there. Or it's like, what's wrong with you nowadays? So that was just another example. And then the last part of the first story of why people are bystanders. After I told the crackheads and the meth heads and everything to get out the car, everybody applauded. The whole bus went into cheer. I was extremely pissed. So I checked everybody on the bus. I explained to them in so many words that you pussies should not be applauding for me because I did what you should have done. There were eight men of similar size, of similar age, closer to her than I was, and not one of them said shit from the beginning of me standing up to the end of them walking out that bus. So I checked every fucking person on that bus and I said, stop fucking applauding for me. I said, you should be more ashamed of yourselves because ain't none of y'all did shit and ain't none of y'all were going to do nothing. So shut the fuck up. It was pin drop quite after that. <laughs> but hey, I felt great saying that. I don't need your fucking applause. I didn't do it so you guys would cheer for me and write sonnets and fucking uh, put me in the newspaper. I did it because I didn't want some young girl getting raped and me not saying nothing. So... Fuck your applause. Don't be the one cheering. Be the one saying something. That's how I think about it. And then the girl later, she thanked me. And I felt bad because I was young, but I felt like an old fucking dad because I'd explain to her to be more self-aware. And I think that's another message I want to get out there is if you're self-aware, a lot of these situations don't happen. So pay attention to your surroundings. For her, all she had to do was sit in the front or sit in the middle, but she decided to sit all the way in the back not paying attention to what was there. So I had to give her a little scold, and I felt hella bad doing that too. But it's just, you, you're you not going to be the fun, good guy. You're going to be the smarter, bad guy in some of these situations. Because to the untrained eye, you look like a bully, bullying on eight crackheads. But in retrospect, these were eight guys that were going to do something very bad to a young girl and ruin her whole life or kill her or do something like that. And I'd rather be the bad guy in the moment, say what I need to say and educate people the way I need to educate people than be the fun, cool guy. And I think that's the issue is everybody wants to be the fun person and everybody wants to uh, not get involved because... That's just too much, and I don't want you to look at me in a certain way. Stop worrying about how the fuck you look and start worrying about helping people out. Even when I do these podcasts, people always say, oh, man, you talk a certain way or you project yourself a certain way. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. I think people pitter-patter and people pussyfoot too much. And for me, the only way I get these messages across is by being real and being myself. And I think that's how you guys need to start being. If you can do that more and you can start implementing what you think, and doing what you say, life is not only a go better for you, but it's a go better for the people around you because then you start teaching them and then they start seeing through your actions how to be. And that's a huge part of this whole conversation. 
And that's why society is the way it is today. That's why we pull out more phones. That's why we don't speak up when we should be speaking up or we don't stick up for somebody that needs you to stick up for them is because it's a very watch society and a let's do. That's why we're on our phones most of the time. That's why you're paying attention to this thing most of the time is because we need to be led and we don't know how to lead. In this podcast or in this YouTube video or however you're watching it, the one message I want to get off to you and the main thing, the main reason why I'm doing this is be singular, be you. Help as many as you can the way that you could help and stop being a bystander and stop watching and stop hoping that somebody else is going to do it. Nobody's going to do it in your life. Nobody's going to do it around you. Always think that it's only you that could do it. And if you do that, then you inspire others. Even when, like I said, even when it comes to these videos, I don't do it to be famous. I don't do it to make a lot of money. I don't do it for anything like that. I just have a lot of information that I've always wanted to get out. And this is a way to get it out. And I think that if I could change one person's viewpoint and I could make it a more positive viewpoint and the next day or week or month, a situation happens where they speak up and it diffuses the whole situation and they feel better for it or they've helped somebody for it, then my job is done. That's the whole reason why I decided to do these. So with that being said, change the narrative, change the way that society is nowadays, speak up, don't watch. And if somebody needs to get fucked up because they're being a dumb shit, you be the one to fuck them up. And if you need somebody to teach you how to fuck them up, I got you. Because I also do personal training and it's boxing focus. So if you need somebody to beat some, or if you need to beat somebody's ass because they're doing too much, hit me up. With that being said, all jokes aside, thank you guys very much for paying attention and listening. That has been 30 minutes of me ranting and raving. Remember, if you need a little bit more of this push and this kick, this is a scope and space I'm getting into that health and lifestyle coaching where I'll be checking up on you, giving you calls, making sure you're going on the right path because most of the time we need somebody to help push you on the right path. And that's what I'm here for. Also, I have my shake, my smoothie, Jake Shakes, which is a holistic smoothie you take in the morning or lunch, gives you energy, gut health, provides all the vitamins, fruits, vegetables, nutrients that your body is lacking. So I have those as well. Contact me for more information. With that being said, enjoy your day. Change somebody's viewpoints. Change somebody's life for the positive, of course. And if they're negative, then beat their fucking ass. Have a good day. Thank you guys very much. I'm out of here. Hey.